I can't remember. Are they one of the places with the cotton around the plants, or do they stuff everything full of packing peanuts? You're about to find out. It's been a year since I've ordered from them. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just got a box in the mail. Figured I'd open it up for today's video. I have something else I'm supposed to be editing for today's video, but it's going to take a long time to edit, and to be honest, I'm just not in the mood. So I thought this might be something that's more fun, pleasant, and easy to get through as far as editing is concerned. What's wrong with my knife? I just put a new blade in here. Why don't you cut? Cut the box. <laughs> it took a few attempts there. Too much caffeine? Not sure what's going on. So what I have here is a box from Hauserman Orchids. I love my orchids, and I mentioned in last week's video that I've just been buying a few new ones every year because I've lost the majority of my collection several years ago for reasons some stuff happened and uh, now I am <laughs> rebuilding and just getting a few things at a time I prefer to do it this way over how I used to buy orchids which was I would just buy any orchid I saw in sight Trader Joe's Walmart didn't matter if it was something other than a phalaenopsis I would buy it problem with that is you all of a sudden end up with too many right and I've been around now I've seen them I've grown them so I know better as to what I like and what I want around or just what I'm intrigued by now, in last week's video I showed a couple of orchids just intermittently in a vlog while I was setting some stuff up over here on the patio and I talked about how I don't do many orchid videos anymore because people always click off of them uh, they just aren't as popular, which is okay. That just means it's something I can enjoy on my own. And I, for the most part, do. Are there something in here? Okay, that's not just packaging material. It's good to know. But I figure, you know, a couple times a year, not a big deal to go ahead and pull out some plants, have a look at them, talk about them. They are still house plants, at least the types that I'm growing. Basic, which I get, okay, hold on. Let me back that up. What I mean by that when I say they are house plants is that they like household conditions more so than a lot of other orchids. Are you going to stand up or you're going to fall down? Okay, it's going to stay. The other ones kept falling over. So mostly what I have in here are simple orchids just because I don't have the time in my life for all of the Vanda orchids that I used to grow, which are awesome orchids, but they like the heat and they don't fare as well indoors unless you have a very humid home and I don't know, an atrium or something that's warm for them. Whereas Phalaenopsis type, which is what I'm pretty sure everything in here is a Phalaenopsis type, they do better indoors. They're more adaptable to being in the house. And most of these, good lord, what did I order? I thought I just got a few things. I feel like I just keep pulling more and more stuff out of here. Hauserman. Hauserman orchids. And this is just the thing letting me know that my order was inspected. That's nice. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. So back to what I was saying. Orchids just don't get the love that houseplants get, which I don't understand because they are houseplants. It's got a nice big spike in here. That's great. So this one's going to be able to give some flowers off pretty soon. So it's really nubby down here. I have to very carefully get all these things off. This is also why I unbox in the box. So much easier. It's going to be a lot of paper shreds to deal with <laughs> when I'm done with all this. I think there might be two spikes in here. Look at this. That is just one big, nice, healthy plant tons and tons of buds in there so I'm not missing out on anything. I'm not seeing any pests in here along the flower buds where I usually look for the pests. Mealybugs love to hang out in there. There's another very popular orchid grower that I used to order orchids from but every single time I got them they had mealybugs or not necessarily mealybugs but you could see the residue left behind from where they had killed mealybugs. Then a couple months later they'd have mealybugs on them. This is it. This is one of my favorites. I, this is a replacement too, so that's even more exciting. And it looks like it's about the same size as the one that I had when I lost it. So the name on this, Phalaenopsis sesame. It has lots and lots of spots on it. A very, very attractive orchid. Reliable bloomer, and they have really large foliage for a Phalaenopsis. What is that? Is that a mealybug? No, it's just dust. I'm so paranoid about the mealybugs these days. That was the main reason I placed the order. So, the orchid that was in, that was probably very loud, I'm sorry. Gently, gentle, gentle, when I packed that back down. 
the orchid that was in last week's video was similar. It had spots on it. I was like, oh, this might be a good substitute. Don't know why I thought I wanted a substitute. It showed up and I was like, nah, it's just not the same. The sesame is tried and true. It's just a beautiful orchid. As I was saying in last week's video when I was unboxing the feudal orchids that I was unboxing is that the orchid videos just don't really get much love or attention, which is okay to each their own, but it just confuses me considering the types of plants that are popular right now amongst houseplants being aeroids. It's just big green leaves. I'm not dissing on them. I think they're cool and everything, but a lot of their care requirements and the media that used to grow them it's the same stuff you're going to need for orchids. With orchids, you get blooms. And some of them do have really cool-looking growth on them. And that was just lucky. I thought this was going to be a Phalaenopsis in here. So oh, that was good timing. That is a very nice, large pseudobulb. Holy freaking crap. And it's got a couple spikes on it. That's good. Let me make sure there's no papers left in there. Look at that. That's so freaking cool. They're neat-looking alien plants. This is Oncidium cherry, baby. It's just a classic Oncidium type orchid. Reliable bloomer as far as the Oncidiums go when you're trying to grow them in the house. And the reason I like this one is not just because as far as Oncidiums go, they tend to be very sturdy and easy to grow. It's the fragrance. These things in the morning particularly, you can smell it throughout the entire house. It's a kind of a fruity chocolatey smell. It's very, very special. It's one of my favorites as far as just fragrance is concerned. That and the Yang Yang Blueberry. And I heard about that one from T.D. Moore, T.D. Moore's Orchids. I think that's Terry's channel name. I can't remember. But if you like orchids, check his stuff out because he'll go into detail on these things like the parentage and all kinds of stuff. And with me, you're just going to get a whole lot of, it's pretty. It's, look at, look at how pretty. But yeah, back it up, back it up some more. There we go. As I was saying, if we're growing a lot of these aeroids, you know, gloriosums and various anthuriums, you already have what it takes to grow the orchids. You're already using the, basically the same potting media that you would need for a lot of orchids. There are some differences. And orchid is a very, very, very large group of plants, right? So you have to take that with a grain of salt. But with, you know, the Phalaenopsis and a lot of the Oncidium types, Paphiopedulums, the very slipper orchids, you could probably grow them just fine if you're doing a good job with some of those anthuriums and philodendrons. I think I'm gonna need two hands for this. I don't wanna mess this up. They're freaking huge. This is another sesame. I like them so much that I went ahead and I ordered two so that I can have one outside and one in the house. I actually thought that I ordered three. I don't know, I guess we'll keep going. We're gonna find out. And I did have someone comment in that video, last week's video, when I was talking about you know, the orchids versus the aeroids and all that stuff, about how they like orchids, but then they grew them, and then they just weren't interesting anymore. And uh, I've heard that from people before. It's not that uncommon. And I get it to an extent, because when you're growing things like, you know, say a gloriosum philodendron, every time it opens up a new leaf, it's so big and exciting. Whereas with the orchids... It's exciting to watch them grow. It's just they do it much, much, much more slowly. But there's still a lot of reward behind that because, well, they grow more slowly than a lot of the aeroids do. You can double up on that excitement because then when they flower, there's another thing to be excited about. And a lot of these Phalaenopsis types, they'll bloom for you a few times a year, depending on, you know, what kind of Phalaenopsis you're growing. But most of them will reward you a few times here. Okay, this is a fun one. Golden Sweet. It's just, well, it's a yellow Phalaenopsis. I don't know why I overhyped that so much. Has nice yellow flowers on it. I thought I would give these a try as opposed to the, uh, I keep on saying Humani Smile. Is that what it's called? Lemons, some happy lemon, something though. No. I don't know what I'm trying to say. There's a yellow that I used to grow and I used to really like it, but every single time I get them, the mealybugs get on them and they end up being so bad that I just toss the orchid. They wash the mealybugs off like once a week and they still come back. I did that for seven months this winter in the house with all my fowls at my garden window in there. I was blasting the mealybugs off them once a week or more whenever I'd seal a mealybug but that was typically once a week and did that from October until uh, gosh just a few weeks ago is when I said that's enough and I threw them away. 
So that's way more than seven months. That's like 10 months. And that just happens sometimes. I think that when it gets to that point, I'm guessing that the mealies have established themselves down inside of the saga moss or the core, whatever you're using. And uh, the next option would have been to take them apart, pull everything out of their containers, and give them like a peroxide rinse, and then start them all over a new pot. When it gets to that point, though, I have to say, hey, these are a tenacious breed of mealy bugs that are growing in here, and I don't want them near my collections. So that's why I got rid of them. That's why I'm getting some new ones here from a grower that is good about not sending you plants that have mealy bugs all over them. Fuller's Sunset. Excellent orchid. They are very, very, very prolific bloomers. This one has three spikes on it. And I'm just loving the size on these too. I also really like that these are in the silicone pots, if you can see it in there. But they went in and they put them into, okay, careful. They put them into four inch squares so that they'll stand up straight because these are so top heavy and they're such big plants. They need some extra stability to stand up. That's a nice looking orchid. The Fuller Sunset, I probably will have had a picture up on the screen, but big yellow flowers and they just bloom, bloom, and bloom. Very good repeat bloomers. Okay, I already opened up the last two and didn't film it because they're just repeats. The Golden Sweets, I got two of, or three of those, so I want to put them in a bowl. The big white bowl that I want to put them in. I don't know what this is because, well, I think that's everything I ordered, so I'm just going to assume this is a bonus plant or some kind of packing material. Oh, no, I did order this. This is an Asco Centrum Mini Atom. These are like a mini Vanda orchid. You can see, strappy, long leaves, monopodial growth. I guess that's kind of the case for all these over here. And they have really pretty orange flowers on them. They put out sprays with lots of small little orange flowers on them. And what I like about these is it's a smaller plant. You can keep them for a long time in a container. Whereas, you know, the Vandacious orchids, they get really big and you just, they don't do great potted. That's not their jam. Okay, I'm going to pack this up and then can have one last look at everything and wrap things up. Gosh, this humidity, the lens greases up so fast. So yeah, there it is. Lots of beautiful <laughs> backlit orchids, very big, healthy plants. I am excited about every single one of these, but these three right here, the little yellow ones right here, golden sweet, those are going to be so pretty together. I have a clamshell bowl. I'm going to pop them all up in one grouping together. That's going to be so nice. And all of the orchids that I have here and I've talked about truly are pretty easy ones to grow. With the Thalanopsis type orchids, being the moth orchids, these ones with the big strappy leaves on them, generally most of the ones you pick up from the store are hyper-cloned and usually pretty good and easy to grow. And uh, the Oncidium Sherry Baby specifically, as far as Oncidiums go, a pretty reliable one. And if you like the Vandacious type orchids, then these little Asconcentrums, <laughs> Ascon, Ascocentrum, they're really good too. If you are an Ikea cabinet haver, pardon the wind by the way, I have the fan on, there's black flies everywhere from the flooding we had out here last week. And it blows them away if I don't have that on, my face gets bitten up and swells up. These will do great in those Ikea type cabinets or the, whatever you're doing for your aeroids because they don't get very big. You can just put a piece of cork on the back wall, something like that, and you can glue these right to the cork with that humidity that you have in there for the aeroids already. You'll just have growth that doesn't really get much wider than this, but it will go taller and then they start to put up lots and lots of other growths from the side. They split up and then they have those orange flowers on them it just it adds a nice texture and you don't have to do much with them other than you know mist them occasionally but in an ikea cabinet probably not all that often really as long as the humidity's you know up there probably around 70 percent or higher they'll be pretty tough and sturdy and just hang out in there and grow and flower and not take up a lot of space it's just add some diversity who doesn't love diversity diversity is what makes things so much more fun and interesting with various types of collections and culture and all that fun stuff. Anyways, yeah, thanks for hanging out. I got some great stuff here. <laughs> Regenerating the population probably a bit more dramatically than I should be right now, but that's okay. These are all, like I said, very simple, easy to grow orchids, so they aren't ones that are going to take up much time out of my life like some others that I've grown in the past. And holy crap, there's going to be a lot of flowers out here in just a few days. By this time next week, these things are going to be popping open all over the place. 
Anyways, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to y'all. What's going on with your plants, your gardens, with your house plants, your collections, reasons you love or maybe dislike the orchids. Put it all out there. Let's talk about it. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, that was some shaky camera work. Keep on growing. Bye bye. Thank you.